Wasted potential time, everyone. So Yay! It, 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 we kind of talked about this a little bit on the other channel of, like, Chainsaw Man having a lot of wasted potential, and it kind of spiraled into this video. Uh, I'm going to try to get Red's lazy ass in here in the meantime. Uh, I can't promise I'll get him in here by the end of the video. Oh, I think. Oh, I think Re after what Red said about me in chain in in the chase on my video, I think he's scared to come in this one. <laughs> uh. Check out our Twitter if you need more context about this conversation. Yeah, and just to clarify. I just to clarify. Red, I, I love you. It was a it was a joke. I was having You're a joke. Acting as if he's actually going to watch this video. <laughs> uh I mean, someone has to. <laughs> yeah, someone has to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there there's one that really comes to mind and you have brought this one up in dms luke that i really wish would have done a lot better um and that's time paradox ghost rider we've talked about it before yeah because the thing is all right so for context with this video it's just basically our thoughts on like what series uh anime or manga wise uh, had some uh, had something that was either built up um, or thought like, oh, this would be interesting, and then it just never fall through with it. And Time Paradox Goes Right is a perfect example of that. Because yeah, but I mean, it also was a victim of an act, so I kind of give it a little leniency in that yeah, regard. Yeah, because like it... recently, Dark Doctor Ikaru, for example, like that series had just ended, and I I, I think Luke actually recommended it to me initially. And it was like a really good uh, read for me, especially as someone in the medical field. But unfortunately, as you can tell from the last chapter, the author's like, I had so many plans for this story. He just went through all the twists, like in the last two chapters. Yeah. And he just ended on a cliffhanger. And it was like sad because it's like, man, this is a lot to go to. But I, that was due to health issues. So yeah, yeah, I was good. At, uh, yeah, I give uh, this is why I didn't pull. Um, uh, Dr. Ikaru in, in this uh, in the system because I was like, yeah, the author had health issues, so I can't uh, I can't really bl um, blame um, them for uh, having things that they really wanted to do and then not falling through with it because it that it was just an unfortunate event that that happened. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and actually, weirdly, I think I did think of a series for we can add to list, but you guys go through yours first. Yeah. So um, with Time Paradox Ghostwriter, it had it. I feel like what it um, what it did um, what it did wrong was, and I said this before, is like what they should have done with the series is that have it be that the main female um, uh, was actually dead, and the main character actually fi actually finds her manga and her and her ghost comes back, and it's like. I didn't get a chance to have this story published, so will you publish it for me? Literally becoming my ghostwriter. Yeah, kind of, um, kind of like discovering the manuscript and then going through with it was one of the the big ideas um, that not only us, but I've seen a couple other people like have the same take. Yeah, because yeah, because feel like the main issue with Time Products Ghostwriter is that a lot of people saw it as like. Um, just obvious play, obvious plagiarism. Mm -hmm. When um, mostly the Japanese audience, yeah, mostly the Japanese. Audience. But I feel like what uh, I feel like that would have actually gotten around it, like because he wasn't he wasn't plagiarizing it. He was just literally being the ghostwriter for somebody else. Yeah, it's a cultural thing that caused this one to get axed. Obviously, like they have a lot more respect for their arts over there um and we might actually be in the first week of like no no leaks now thanks to the yeah the, that's the, yeah, the whole thing yeah that I, I was debating whether or not that should be a video in of itself i ain't touching and that with that's a very complex <laughs> yeah because i touched on this with uh Ann Ar Ann arbor and um in uh in voice chat and he went off on one about um uh, about it to me. Yeah, like I'm glad that leaks exist for some things, and I'm very you know glad that they're possibly dying for other things. Yeah, um, I'm okay yeah. with it for Weekly Shonen Jump because it's yeah. just like we're getting simul pub series, exactly. <laughs> like for free. Like, yeah. what more do you want? Exactly. But, uh, but like other things that are like not published properly, I, I'm going to miss them if that's the continued trend. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. And I feel like um, the people who are really getting pissy are the ones who just want to read the chapter early and then and then just spoil it for everyone. Yeah, it's going to hurt content creation for people to do weekly reviews a little bit because they can get a little bit ahead of the race. But other than that, I don't really give a shit on weekly Shonen Jump stuff. Um, yeah, I don't either. I, I, uh, and then you have people who are saying like, "No, no, we like the we like the fan we like the fan translations because we hate Viz's um, <laughs> localizations." They can choke on a dick. Um, yeah. But anyway, um, back to the yeah, topic. Yeah, um, yeah, back to the topic and. I feel and I feel like one of the other wasted potentials of um Time Pirates Ghost Ghost Riot is um have it's like say the main female was a ghost and then the or the guy writing uh, the guy doing like the ghost writing could have actually been like hey I think this idea would work and then she's like no 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 this uh, like she could have been like a character who was like it, it was kind of like say um a Togashi ca- kind of character who was like it's my it's my series. I want it to be this kind of thing, right? Uh, like this. I don't want anything being tra- anything basically being like so protective of her work that she was reluctant to accept. Like, hey, maybe this needs to be changed in some capacity. And yeah, they could have done some interesting things with like even the ghostwriter being like, well, how much of this is really my work? I'm getting popular off of simply being effectively like a translator in a way. Yeah. Um. And not even really that, because translators at least have the opportunity to really add their own voice in um, their works and be able to make creative decisions. Uh, well, at least when they care about their job. But, you know, that's a whole other discussion video in and of itself. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I, I agree that it, with a different execution of the concept, um, it definitely could have been better. But at the same time, I do... Uh, you know, with some time having passed, I do see, like, why Japan didn't really get with this series. Yeah. And I think I, even it took a first, it took a couple chapters for even me to get invested into it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, it was a slow burn for what it was. I I, I do think that the the moral guilt would have been, like, a, a really good way to tackle, like you were saying. Like, I'm essentially just translating or adapting this for the spirit basically right and there's a lot that could be said for that i wonder a dark way of putting it i wonder how much of like studio gaga is feeling this right now finishing berserk right because they're getting a lot of attention being what's finishing the series and there's a lot more eyes on them now well well, here's, uh, here's the thing with that. And I've, I've been actually read a good chunk of Berserk. I'm nearing the end of the Millennium Falcon arc, which I've really, I've really loved that arc. Um, with that, I feel like, I've, I, I feel like, um, because Miura told, um, uh, oh, what's the, what's the guy taking over? What's he called again? Um, I'm trying to remember his name. I'm drawing a blank right now. Um, Let me look it up quickly. Fake fan, fake fan, fake fan. Uh. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I guess um, well, uh, Luke's M- doing M- that. Miori. Miori, that's it. Um, so it's supervised by Koji Miori. I feel like be- um, it is still Miori's work because he he told Miori what was going to happen in the series. And he was the only person who told him that. So... In my mind, it felt like um, Miura basically said to him, "Like, look, I may not be able to finish this series, so I'm telling you, you, so that you can actually finish the series for me." Yeah, uh, but like, it, it puts a whole new light on that studio right now, right? So I wonder how much of like that that guilt and that pressure they're feeling of like we're not even doing our own work; we're doing like somebody else's. Excuse me. So, I mean, I don't want to belittle uh, the industry or people who work in it, but right. isn't that like a somewhat common practice for like studios to be like, uh, we're kind of just like an assistant or just kind of doing cleanup yeah. work and things along those yeah, lines? Yeah, there, there's a lot of that, but I feel like it, in this case in particular, like carrying the torch for somebody who's passed is a whole other level of weight. Um, well, it's the kind of same thing with... Um, Go 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 Thirteen. I think that's the name of the series yeah. where the author has passed away, but he said like, "I still want my story to continue." Yeah, 
and, and like it's yeah, and I have seen that. I think with the Wheel of Time series that was one me and my friends really enjoyed back in uh, our high school days. Yeah, um, Brandon Sanderson finished that recently. Yep. Um, who that? He's a good writer. Yeah, he really is, and absolutely fucking insane. Uh, like the amount of books he pumps out somehow. <laughs> Whereas, like, yeah, I mean, it's he, not like they're even bad books. Even <laughs> they're actually really good. Yeah, like in the time that um, George R. R. Martin's been writing the last Game of Thrones book, he's put out like I think a hundred books. Oh my God, <laughs> like that. I don't think that series is ever getting complete. Oh, absolutely not. That man is a fossil. It, it will get finished probably by Brandon Sanderson. <laughs> uh, which is funny to think about. But... Yeah, morbidly funny. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, anyway, we, should we go on to the next series? Yeah, yeah. Like? so, um, just to wrap up the thoughts on Time Paradox Ghost Raya, um, with better execution, it could have, it could have worked, it could have worked, but, like you said, Pirate Jams, it was probably for the best that it was, like, didn't stick around. Yeah. There wasn't a whole yeah. lot more that I think even we did a whole with. axed, oh, yeah. sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off axed. Yeah, I don't think there was a whole lot more that could have been done with it in the way it was being told either. So I'm not as, like, pressed on this one as I am some others on this list. Yeah. It is unfortunate, yeah, though. Go ahead. Yeah. What I was going to say is that, like, we did a whole Axe podcast, the three of us. And, like, I, the conclusion I came to when we were done is, like, while we do have, like, one or two series, we're sad to have seen Axe. Most of them are very well justified when yeah. you think about it. Absolutely. I think this is one of them. Yeah, and I feel like um, one that's pretty much uh, on the chopping block right now is um, Two on Ice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll talk probably more about the uh, the Jump series in our what, Shonen Jump. Yeah, the quarterly Giant jump time. thing, yeah. Um, our usually three and a half hour video about what's <laughs> changed in Jump in the last quarter, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, like the next one on, on the list for me, uh, and this is a very, very deeply rooted in channel lore discussion is bleach let's let's get that one out yeah, of the way right now yeah yeah so my main issue which I, i've always had this i've always had this issue ever since um uh it stems from like um from one of Tekken one of one's videos but when i when i sat down to watch that video i was thinking about it and then i'm like yeah this this really should have been more important than it is and that's each go sisters mm -hmm. like um, because he brought up the good point, and I and I agree with this, which is why I make it I make it a point. Like whenever I do some writing, like okay, if I'm gonna write a main character and the main character has siblings, they have to either be part of the main cast or at least be major characters in the series. Because it that's um, if you look at other series like Bleach, um, where you have the main character and the main character has a brother or a sister. They they're usually part of that central cast. Um, I mean, Bleach Bleach itself is a prime example with Rukia. You have Biakia, then you have Luffy with Ace and Sabo, Tanjiro with N N Nezuko, even Promised Neverland. Despite uh, I promised Neverland is on this list, even that at least knew like okay, we have Emma as the main character, and we have two of her siblings as the other lead characters. Mm -hmm. And a new Exorcist, a new series, they brought in a sibling to the harem because we're all inclusive. <laughs> yeah, um, and Black Clover as well. You have um, you have Asa and uh, uh, you know. Yeah, I like how that point just went over everyone's head, but it's fine. Yeah, uh, but well, yeah, I do agree. Like, I think it's uh, nice when the family members have a more active role. But I also think you and I have that perspective because we have siblings, and they, you know, were a big part of our lives growing yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. It's almost um, weird when they're not. Yeah, uh, which is why I think a lot of um, uh, now that I think about it, a lot of like main characters are, uh, tend to be only childs when you really think about it. <laughs> Yeah, like my PFP Senku right here. Yeah, yeah. Um, but even with set, but even with Doctor Stone, you have Kohaku, who's um, who's the main female lead. Um, Ruri, that like she was a, she was important for like the first uh, part of the series. Okay, I feel like that example almost is counter to what you said because Ruri, who was my favorite girl, got like written off pretty quick. Well, uh, it, I mean, she no, had a role, but still. yeah, yeah, she still she still had she still had more of a role than Ichigo's sisters. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Man, that's sad, actually. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah um, but I just don't get, like, because 
theoretically, if you really think about it, with uh, with each girl sisters, they ha- should have all the same all the same powers that each girl has. Oh yeah, for sure. And I think that you know, based on early Bleach chapters, there was probably a plan to incorporate them more. But I think like a lot of Shonen uh, Jump series, at some point they kind of pivot in direction. Like Undead Unluck, for example, I think was um, originally going to focus a lot more um, at the start with like Andy and Foucault's like run from the Union, but ultimately they ended up joining up a whole lot sooner than I think was right. initially expected. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I had a way of like, because I said this in the DMs to Fex, like instead of having Chad, because Chad is another character that's just like wasted potential. He's like, out of all the main cast, he's the one that is like, oh, you think he's going to do something really badass and then he just kind of fizzles out. Yeah, no, like he has one like really badass moment in that final arc and then he's gone, right? Like there, there's no... Which, um... Which now that I say that, uh, I'm holding my tongue. I'm holding my tongue for that because uh, the Zero Squad was wasted potential in the manga, but in the anime, it's right. been redeemed. It's totally been redeemed. Right. So, like, yeah, the, true. The, there could be more done with the anime, I guess, but I don't feel like they, that. Um, Kubo has co- gone on record and saying there is going to be more done with uh, in parts three and four because we're. Um, at the moment, where we are in the um, manga timeline, we're, uh, we're, we've literally only got like 60 chapters left to adapt of the um, of the manga for the yeah. Thousand Year Blood War. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say there's four parts to this. Yeah, there's four parts. They've confirmed four parts, 52 episodes. Which okay, I'm is... guessing there's going to be some filler then. No, yeah. there one say filler, no. but um, more, more filler. like added, co- more like added content for it because um, right, I should really get used to saying anime only content. In yeah, this day and age, because filler is no longer really. Co- uh, Kubo did say that uh, with the female Quincy, he wa- there was a fight he wanted to include it, but he didn't get a chance to include that. It was pretty much the fa- the extended fight that they had with each go in the anime. Yeah, and, like, they've been doing little bits and pieces of, like, the light novels as well with that, so I figure part of that would be adapted into it instead of, like, your generic, like, Beast Sword arc filler or whatever you saw yeah. back in the day, right? Um, Which, you know, in its own right was, you know, a Kubo design. All of that was, like, his handiwork in it as well, but... Yeah, like traditional filler where like you just go off to the beach for this episode. That's kind of fucking dead. Hey, 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 we have to have the standard beach episode in every anime. That is law facts. No, we don't. We don't. Yes, 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 we do. We don't need an excuse to see Titty and Bleach when we got Yororichi and Rangiku over there, okay? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Uh, But yeah, going back to the initial point of Ichigo Sisters, um, I said, like, so imagine if um, instead of having Chad in the series, we replace him with Karin and Yuzu and have them be part of the main group and have them awaken their powers because um, it could have been written that Karin awakens uh, Shinigami and a Quincy hybrid power, like, like kind of like what Ichigo gets, essentially. Mm-hmm. And Yuzu gets, like, the Shinigami and the Fallbringer as her main powers. I mean, we could definitely, you know, have done something better like that, and I really, really wish we did, because, like, Karin was such an interesting character. Um, yeah. Yuzu less so. Uh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, but I also had I also had the idea of, and somebody did do this, uh, I, I've mentioned this before as, like, a fanfic, where you have um, Yuzu in the final arc kind of being, like, ha- hash roll, because it's revealed that Hashwolf in the final arc is a Quincy with no Quincy powers, but he's giving, but he's distributing powers out to Basby, which is why Basby's so strong. I had the fear of like, what if Yuzu was like that, but with Ichigo, and she was brought to the Thunder Reich. So it's not just Uriu uh, as part of the Thunder Reich, it's Uriu and Yuzu. So it ha- Ichigo has more of a reason to be like, I've got to defeat these guys. Yeah, it, it would have had a lot more emotional stakes there because like that's his blood, you know, risking themselves as well. So, like, this is a bunch of, like, random bullshit going on in the background. Mm-hmm. I don't really care. Um, also, like, I'm sorry Chad has, like, 
the worst. He is the worst out of all of the main cast to me. He has the emotional weight of a fucking wet paper towel. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, uh, absolutely, absolutely. I um, as much as I like that, the uh, mind you, it was quite it was quite funny for me when Chad when Chad thought like I could take on Shun Sui, and I'm just there like thinking like you're not gonna <laughs> no. beat this. You're not gonna beat this guy. You are not gonna beat this guy. Hey, literally no. <laughs> like, I I that I'm just like I I hope he dies here. <laughs> <laughs> he's just you're a fucking idiot um but like there's there's like something to be said about their the the designs that chad got though right because he got some of the most awesome designs for his abilities right i love that yeah. um but there's like i just could not give less of a shit about him as a character unfortunately outside yeah. of his cool designs so there's the uh i've, well, I've just posted the most stuff that's the fanfic that I requested someone to do, and they actually did do it. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll try and remember and link all of the things. Um, I cannot promise yeah. I will remember to link all the things. Yeah, but um, I just gotta say, with that fanfic, he got, uh, the person I, I, I credit, like, Wacky Biscuit, uh, I've gotta say, great name, by the way, he went all out, because Hashworth in that fanfic just basically does to Yuzu what they did to Alex in the Clockwork Orange, basically bra um, melted her brain and just saw Ichigo as, like, his hollow monster form. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. I, I love that Red reacted to my, like, hey, if you want to join this, come join it, and it, with a heart reacting messenger, but he just hasn't done. He hasn't come in the call. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, He's like, I love you guys, but, you know. <laughs> I love yeah. you guys, but I'm also working on putting the Hasbro Hotel video up. I guess I don't fucking know. But, fair enough. But yeah, like I said, theoretically, if you really do think about it, they should have like um, all the powers that each girl. I know each girl kind of got the brunt of it, but it's still it's still um, um, Ishin, who is not only a Shinigami, he's a Captain Shinigami from a noble family. <laughs> Oh yeah, right. And as far as I understand, they all have the same mom. So yeah, yeah, and they all have the same, and they all have the same mom. So and uh, who who is who is a Quincy with the blood of basically the Quincy God. So yep. it's like it's like why wouldn't they have uh, have um, more power than they're exhibited? Like um, Yuzu, especially, she should be at least be able to see spirits one hundred percent. Absolutely, like yeah. Um, but I had another thing that was just like a uh, wasted potential as well with the uh, with the bleach manga, which I'm hoping, praying that this comes to fruition. A reunion between Ishin, Rongiku, and Toshiro. I've seen like so much fan art of that happening. It was hilarious. Yeah, because that really should have happened. Like, or, at like very, I think in one the very, of the movies. Or at the very least, uh, at the very least, um, at some point, um, Ron Giku should have said to each girl, like, what's your father's name? Like, it, she, could, cause she could have sensed his spiritual pressure and just be like, each girl, what's your father's name? You would have I thought mean, that. Yeah, what you... I was. Oh, go ahead. It, what I was going to say was, um, I think the fan art I saw, like, referred to, like, the, the movie, the. Uh, what was it called? But it's a guy uh, and like oh, uh, his Diamond friend, Diamond Dust Rebellion. Yeah, thank you. It, in Diamond Dust Rebellion, I think Ichigo invited uh, the captain over to his house, and then someone pointed out it's like if he actually took up him on that invitation, he would have been like, oh my god, it's my captain. Yeah, yeah. You and would've... I'm like, that would have been good. Yeah, <laughs> that, that would be a great way to end the movie. You think about that. Yeah, it really would have done. Because uh, it's not like um, Ishin wasn't fond of the two of them. He really was. Yeah. So yeah, I mean that could have been a whole thing, but yeah, yeah. and oh, and yeah, Ishin, you better do much more in this final battle. Other than I'm just gonna show up with um, Ryuken, give this arrow, and then we're gonna bugger off. 
Oh, no, 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 no. He's going to sit there. He's going to be a little bit unhinged and then fuck off. He's still not going to contribute anything. No, uh, no. Danny, I, I, I'm I, hoping um, if there's one fit of fight that I really want to, I don't care who it's against, but just give us a Ishin, Rongiku, Toshiro team up fight. Even though cool. I'm not the biggest Toshiro fan, just give us that. Hey, just hey, have, hey, 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 Toshiro. Toshiro is one of the best characters in the damn series. I will not stand and let you slander my boy. <laughs> Wait, are you being I mean, serious, Dad? Say anything I would. Are you being serious? Are you being serious? I mean, Kenpachi's my favorite, but I really like Toshiro him. Toshiro is my f he is my sweet little child. I will protect him. Okay. You, you can you can protect him. You um okay okay you can protect him, but I'm still gonna say like I'm just not like the biggest Toshiro fan. It, it um I mean you can you can like him. I, he's just not gonna be one of my favorite characters. <laughs> I, I I swear, like when I was collecting, because I used to collect like all the Zombactos, because they were on Amazon for a period of time. I don't know if they still are. I'm like I must have Toshros and I must have Rukias. Uh because Rukias like literally white, right? Yeah, and, like from moving and being around tobacco for years and years and years is like disgusting yellow now. I'm like, ugh, I'm just gonna throw you away. <laughs> I'm not taking you into my new house. I'm just gonna throw you away. <laughs> um, the downside to living with smokers and it's it's unfortunate. So now I gotta literally. Okay, I, I like how you say that. Like, there's like only one downside. <laughs> Living with someone who's. I I say as I hit my vape. <laughs> <laughs> but like, this is the part where I have to PSA. Please don't start smoking, kids. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's like there's like zero benefits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can be nice and skinny, and it, it cures all diseases. Remember all those fucking PSAs back in the day. Like, I I think there was like one disorder where it's like, oh hey, because of the way it affects blood vessels, maybe smoking does have. Some you know, benefits. you know, like, we're not gonna I, tell people that. Oh my god, I've just thought about something. Re I've just thought about something really hilarious. A p a, a PSA ad about smoking being bad, and then it just cuts to um, Rongiku and Rongiku with her uh, ash some pot too, and then Isha just smoking. Absolutely not. <laughs> yes, we need that. We need that. <laughs> Does somebody get a little Karibo to do that. Like that seems up his alley. <laughs> um, but no, like that. That was the unfortunate thing because I've been slowly like moving a lot of my shit around to kind of get the studio like up and running to start streaming again, at least like partially full time. Uh, I'm like, yeah. That's just going to go in the trash, and I'm packing everything and reorganizing it. I'm like, God, I never realized I had that much crap that was coated in nicotine from, like, my parents both being smokers and having lived with them for a while. And then now, you know, because I started vaping again, probably that contributed to it. But anyway, um, I, I, I got to say, I was hoping Red would get his lazy ass in here for Chainsaw Man. So I'm gonna save that one for last. Okay. Uh, I, I I gotta I gotta go into Promise Neverland with this one. Yeah. Oh, and also I'm gonna say it right now. I'm lifting the meme of um, there is no season two just for this one video. Yeah, just for this one video, right? Uh huh. Like, like yeah. Like we're gonna pretend that season two doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah. I, I, but I guess I guess we can acknowledge it for the purposes of this video. Okay, I, I gotta say, season two should have just been fucking Goldie Pond. Okay, and season three good yeah. than everything else, right? I don't yeah. give a shit. Goldie yeah. Pond I, was specifically they had to designed save it for the mobile game, Vex. Don't yeah. you know? <laughs> I hate that. I hate that. I I really do. Like. You could have done both, right? The mobile game could have existed as, like, promotional material for it. it you could, you know, release, like... I mean, you're right. There's, like, no... There's literally anime adaptations of mobile games, and right. I watch them, so... Yeah, I can you, tell you... You watch Arknights, like, for God's sake. 
<laughs> it's like nobody's gonna play our gotcha game like after they know the whole story. It's like now nah, I'm pretty sure they will because one, the manga already exists, and two, if the gotcha games are addictive. I can I can give the cosign yeah. on that. Oh, absolutely. Give me give me a Honkai Star Rail uh, anime uh, after you get done with the like eight year adaptation of Genshin Impact. Um. And I will sit there and I will watch it like a happy little fucking consumer. Uh, like there, yeah, no there's... criticism, just consume. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> Sad that's our reality at this point. Uh, but like we only have it... ourselves to blame. Well, not really. We can blame the corporations too. But yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say really we're going on there. Uh, but like there's there's something to be said about like this mentality of the not wanting to put the stuff into multiple formats when sword art online has 87 different gotcha games that have existed and they were still shitting out season after season right the the perfect yeah and, but, and by the way i've got i've got i've got to ask you a question um fex i am um, i haven't looked up the character's age but um how old is Sion meant to be in the in um sort in the um Gungale arc? Uh, in, um, the, in the Gungale arc, okay, I gotta look this up because uh, because if 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 that's the case, this just makes this whole thing about Goldie Pond that much worse. Uh, sixteen during the Phantom Bullet arc, so yeah, at sixty. Okay, um, so and there are some characters in Goldie Pond that are that are technically sixteen. Uh, as far as as far as I'm aw- as far as I'm aware, so I don't understand why they couldn't have just um, adapted Goldie Pond. I've heard it uh, from what I've heard, and I don't know if this is true. It's like they were against kids having the guns. Yeah, I'm sorry. But, the the fan wiki hit- the fan wiki is fucking insane. They have her measurements in here. The fuck. But uh, his his the his- okay. You say that like. <laughs> I mean, they canonically released that information. I don't see what. <laughs> but here's the thing: they have to just include the content that they have. It's yeah. not really their fault. <laughs> yeah. But here's the thing uh, as well: it's like it's not like they're using the guns against other people. They're using them against monsters, demons. Yeah, and, and sort of. I mean, that Online... is part of the reason they have monsters as enemies. Yeah, in Sword Art Online, they're literally like the potential to kill the people in there. Yeah, you're right. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, like you said, go. It, it's crazy to think about, like the the apprehension to show like the the mass violence, right? In that that arc, when we in like episode hunter, three, hunter, 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 anyone? Yeah, exactly. Like episode three of the fucking anime, I believe it was was the the chase scene, right? And you're watching mother, you know, break. Emma's leg, clean, and then just like, oh, sweet little child, let me hold yeah. you. You know, like that isn't fucking unhinged, right? <laughs> but guns, yeah, but guns are line. where they draw the line. Yeah, um, child um, abuse like, and murder, perfectly fine. Guns, bad. And like you said, Goldie Pond was just an arc that that arc was just like begging to be animated. Could you imagine was... how hard the animation would go for the the like. Pandora's box full of weapons. You oh know? yeah. Oh, can you? Yeah, it would have been like. Um, okay, it might have not been on this level, but it would. It probably would have. They probably would have been like, okay, we've got this. Uh, we've got this badass fight. We've got several people versus this one demon. Let's just go all out, balls out, um, demon slayer episode nineteen style. Yeah. No. Like one hundred percent. Yeah. And. Uh, and I do like that fight. I've re- reread it several times. I still think I still think that is one of the um, best um, modern shonen jump fights because it's more it's more tactical than anything of just being like, okay, we have to we have to trap this guy because we know he's going to be super fast. He's he, one hit and we're dead. Yeah, like, against this guy. It's crazy. Like the funny thing is, like the entirety of like the Goldie Pond arc. And that fight against Lewis could have been, even if they didn't want to adapt it as a full season, right? They could have done what they're doing with, like, the Rize arc in Chainsaw Man and made it into a movie, right? Like, give us a 90-minute, 95-minute movie, and that would have worked perfectly fine as well. Because it's so fast-paced, that arc. Like, having reread it 
uh, before I sold, like, my my collection of Promise Neverland. So I'm like, okay, let me go back and read this again just to see, like, if I have any different thoughts on it, like, binging through it. And realistically, I didn't. That's why I'm like, okay, I can part with this. Um, but, like, having reread that, like, it could have worked as, like, a, a movie, like an in-between, you know, season movie or a special like they were doing with Dr. Stone, uh, like they did with the Re the Ryuse special, right? Yeah. That, it, the, the, b both of those examples could have worked perfectly fine, but instead they they fucking paywalled it behind, or not even paywall, but like region locked it behind this like Japanese exclusive gacha game, and you know wasted some of the best like specifically made for anime content that existed in the series, and that's the unfortunate reality of like what studio gets what adaptation, right? Uh, I don't really have a lot of faith in Cloverworks. Like, I don't really, as a Sword Art Online fan, I don't really have a lot of faith in A1, you know, at all. But their subsidiaries are equally, like, as notorious for, like, making stupid fucking changes like this. And that's the sad thing. Like, Ayakashi Triangle, I'm glad I got, like, Silver Fox, I believe, is who adapted it. Yeah, uh, which I think is the... Uh, oh no, Silver Lynx is the one Silver that's Lynx. got Yosuko uh, family, yeah, yeah. which um, I am I am so happy that um, somebody else other than Cloverworks or A1 got Yosuko family. I also um, want to say that I think a lot of anime fans don't know there's other studios out there. No, like they they, they hear Mappa, they hear Toei, <laughs> or they hear Madhouse. Like, um, yeah. and that's it. And then, like, every now and then you'll be like, oh, A1. But now we have, like, people finding out, it's like, oh, Science and Zaru's a thing. Okay. A Studio Connect is who got Ayakasha Triangle. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, so, um, what's next on your list? Yeah. Um, I, I, I still want like that. Really yeah, quick. I still want to. I still want to um, talk about some aspects of Promise Neverland that I feel like oh, were, okay. were absolutely wasted. Um, uh, just, um, I feel like what they really, really should have done was just because um, it's like you've said, Fex, and I agree with this. Looking back, like too many of the kids escaped. There were too many characters mm -hmm. that it really didn't um, have a lot of time to focus focus on. Um, what needs to be focused on. So I feel like it should, uh, my, if I was rewriting the series and um, you could have had it be like, Emma, Emma could have still gone through all thing of like, I want to save everyone. I want to save ev everyone. But there could have been like a moment of reflection with her of, of just being like, uh, okay, I can't save everyone here. And then, and then you bring in Phil to say like, okay, I know you want to escape Emma. I'll look after everyone while you and a few of the others escape. So you just have, instead of 15 kids escaping, you have five kids escaping, six at max. Yeah. So then you have more time for things to be properly fresh out, give character development to the characters that absolutely need it and be like, okay, here's your six core characters. And if you want to, and you can always like, um, Swap, swap them out from each arc so like okay we're gonna have these characters for this arc and then these characters for these other ar uh, arcs etc etc just wrote kind of like what they do what um uh Togashi does with uh with Hunter Hunter where he, like he rotates out the cast in each arc uh, as far as I'm aware hmm. yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. They're, so they're, it's like yeah, so it's like we're not all, always focusing on Emma, Ray, and Norman. We're focusing on other characters throughout the series, and that could have been something that would be really help expand the world and get and get to know the other characters. Because, as well, you uh, and I'll agree. Like this is probably uh, Promise Neverland has probably one of the worst time skips. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Like, uh, what? Because I, I was like trying to try my best to like, which I kind of stopped and i really want to get back into my force like, trying to rework the um promised neverland um manga uh which i was doing in the chat in the anime and manga general chat and i i i had the ideas of like okay we're not gonna have the time skip until much much later on um but instead we're gonna have other arcs where we're gonna like go and explore the demon world yeah. and find and find out like hey 
uh, and actually find and actually find more families that are like uh, that are like uh, uh, Song Ju and Musica, where it's like we don't really want to hurt hurt you hurt humans, but we have to do to survive. And um, and Emma has like um, intellectual uh, as intellectual as you get for a twelve year old, but like have conversations with, like, hey, our family's struggling as well. It's not like. It's not like oh we're 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 the overarching we're the dominant ones like no there's just as much corruption in the demon world as there is for what's going on with you guys. Here here's a potential like because I like where you're going with that but like let's add into there the the fact that the entire like back third of the series right was felt like an RPG right yes um, oh uh, yeah now that i look back on it yes it was because uh when ren and i were still reviewing this before we dropped it like we we were comparing it to like a video game like let's play right but like having reread it i, I wouldn't even consider it like a let's play i would consider it more like the side quest to the side quest than an rpg right think your thieves guild's quest line in uh skyrim for example right um yeah we were going and tracking down like all the the little gems of Benezria or however you say it, and and not really knowing what the fuck they're doing until you actually get them all right. That's kind of what it felt like, just literally piecing the the pieces together of a quest line to finally reach that final arc. And you know there there's not a lot differentiating like say that and like your generic like filler ish arc not like full-on filler but like your your arc that kind of leads into the big arc right and the lot of series do that but like nothing really came from exploring the world in those moments other than moving from point a to point b like there, no. it felt so barren and empty in a universe where we're led to believe like there are demons fucking everywhere right because we're meant to think like every time they go we're to be outside they were supposed to be in peril and i guess that was more like the like hey everybody's out to get you that is being fed to them through like the propaganda that the houses are doing right yeah because because the whole idea was like the house is what it's like we didn't want them to know about like mujica being like um demon jesus which is what i called her essentially right and I mean, you're not you're not fully wrong because it's like they literally literally her blood was like holy blood it's like you drink this and then you don't have to eat humans right like there's there's something to be said about like having a world that's supposed to feel so full of life feel so lifeless and it's the same issue i have with breath of the wild and tears of the kingdom right like if you're going to have an open world and explore an open world you want to be able to interact with it right um yeah so, like, to me, when I was reading those arcs and trying to make content out of them, I'm like, what really happened here? We moved two steps on the board. And so, like, kind of, like, the same thing I'm feeling right now with Chainsaw Man. Other, yeah. I'm still enjoying Chainsaw Man because I still have more attachment to the characters there than I did 97% of the cast of Promised Neverland. Yeah, right? and what would have been, like, an actual good, uh, good idea to do was, like, okay... Emma, Ray, and a few of us meet this demon family, and at first they're unsure about it, but then they're like, no, no, they're actually okay, and yes, even though they eat humans, it, they're kind of being for, forced to do it, and they don't really want, want to do it, and they kind of want to get to know get to know humans, but then you have, say, um, Norman's group come in, but we don't know that it's Norman's group at first, and just shoot this, shoot everyone except for one demon that... Emma, Ray, and Norman need uh, Emma, Emma, and Ray, and everyone needs to protect. And it's kind, of, and a demon would be part of the main cast then, because that's something I would have been interested in seeing. Of like, what would it be like to have, say, somebody from the opposite side, but uh, kind of like be on your side and kind of being like, no, this is all this is all wrong. Even though I'm kind of being forced into this situation, I don't agree with it. Mm-hmm. And that would have actually drove like the conflict that Emma, that Emma Ray and Norman would have had even f even further because then because Emma says like I don't want to kill the demons because I've seen them and and that would have just added more like I've seen them like they're struggling just as much as we are so how are we any better than them? Right. Um. There. There's. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off on posting that shit post for a minute. Um, there's there's something to be said about like, you know, I I've shit on the series enough throughout the years. I'll I'll, I'll just leave you guys to finish this one. Yeah, like, and I'm I'm just gonna fish on um one other thing that I had, and that was the ending. Now, uh, I am somewhat content with the ending, but what I would have um. The only thing that I would have changed about the ending uh, is the fact that, and I've said this before multiple times, is that the promise that Emma had to make is that, because uh, she said, it, it, the demon god basically said, you will never see your family again. So what I feel like would have worked so much better is that not only does she lose the memory of the people, but she loses the ability to legitimately see them. So like, they can see her. But from her perspective, she can't see anyone related to her family. So, like, if Norman was in front of her, Norman would be able to see her, but she would not be able to see him. Right. Yeah, yeah I was, think you brought was, up this idea before. Yeah, that was, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure we have by this point. Because yeah. This is one we've talked a lot about. Uh, and I agree with that one, right? Like, there's there are so many better ways to handle, like, the final chapter you know, with the stakes kind of, like, still having the weight of, like, we have went through this journey together, but now, like, either Emma's unable to see, or, you know, even the other uh, children from Gracefield were unable to see her. Um, or, you know, if we cycle all the way back to the beginning, and, like, there having been more stakes and more kids dying, and, like, Ray had actually committed to the bit in the beginning yeah, arc. Yeah, I, yeah, I still stand, but I, I will agree with that. That was, one of, that was just done for shock value. That was pure shock value, and I, My I brother remember, in Christ, the first chapter was pure shock value. Oh, but no, oh, it absolutely was, but, um, uh, but the pop, but the chapter where Ray was revealed to be alive, um, because I was that was when I was doing like um reviews where I was showing like the panels for Promise Neverland. I legitimately went on a two minute rant of just going no, 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 no. I remember. Like there yeah. there's there's so there's so much that could have changed and made the series better. And we could talk ourselves blue in the face talking yeah. about it. But uh, hey, at least it wasn't as bad as the anime's anime season two ending, which was so bad that nobody wanted to be credited with. You know, you dumb fucked up when the, the cast and crew don't want to be associated with the product you put out. Like, uh, hey, 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 hey! You know, you know how Isabella had that emotional sacrifice to kind of sort of redeem herself for all the shit that she put everyone through throughout the series. Yeah, let's not go through that. Let's just have a survive and be all happy in the human world. You know, I think that's enough on that. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. um, Spy Family. Let's, let's go to that one. Like, what what identity does the series have anymore? Like, let's, let's, let's be honest here. What identity does it have? Other it's than... meant to, well, it's meant to be an action. Uh, it's meant to be a comedy. Uh, is it meant to be a slice of life se series? Uh, is it meant to just be here so that the people can say it's better than Yozakura family? Like, I I genuinely love the series for the first, like, seven volumes, roughly. And now I feel nothing. Like, I, I'm caught up with it. I feel yeah. nothing. And I and I'm and I'm sort of like skimming skimming through it and I just don't feel anything anything for the for the series for the series anymore because it just seems like the author has so many different ideas bouncing all over the place that uh he doesn't really know how to how to structure them well unlike say um okay which watch um is, is a series that has a lot of different uh a lot of different ideas and um uh, uh, ideas and um stories going around but the difference here uh, the difference there as opposed to with spy x4 is that there is clearly a structured pattern going on uh, it's what i consider like well, if i can really say that with watch because sometimes they just do the most random they yeah, yeah two yeah. chapters on jeans okay. yeah yeah they do they do the most random of things but like when it comes to like okay i have a clear plan for this particular part of the story i have a clear plan for this particular part of the story because it's uh it's like um and we'll get and we'll talk more about this when we do our uh, witch watch video tomorrow but 
um, Sean and Aldridge said on his last live stream that um, uh, there are things that have clearly been planned from the start with Witch Watch. Yeah, whereas I, I don't, and I will say with Witch Watch, there's made more progress. I think that's the bigger thing. Yeah, whereas like we've had like major story arcs like resolved and continuing yeah, and developing. Isn't the whole point of yeah, because Lloyd the, the super spy still hasn't figured out anything about your and that's the thing that annoys me so much about it. And hey, Spike Family fans, you wanna know how you make how you make a couple interesting? You actually make them a real couple and show them really living together and how the family reacts about them. I mean <laughs> they do live family. together. They do live together. They they do play the role of the happy family. They they do seemingly genuinely have feelings for each other, even if it is just for the bit, so to speak. You know, that's the thing, right? I I do buy that they do have a connection, right? And I figure by the end of the series, they'll be like, hey, let's stay together. Um, I I do genuinely believe that. Um, yeah. But yeah. I don't I don't like the we have literal like super spy intelligence agencies here being so fucking brain dead. They can't put two and two together. I mean. Lloyd should have worked, figured out in the very first chapter that uh, that Anya was a, uh, Anya was a telepathic. I, I don't know if it's like there's not a lot of these, you know, well, shit. Like, I'll at least give telepathy a pass just because right. if, if he has no basis but, for it. Yeah, it fair enough. But it. at the same point, he should have realized, like, I when when he was thinking, like, I'm looking for someone that's six year old, and then this kid just says, "I'm six. He should have been like, "Wait." Did she just read my mind? Because I mean, li literally, literally, I'm just gonna say it right right now. Like, um, this is this is this is exciting. It would be like it would be like if in uh, if in um, Yu-Gi-Oh when you when the Pharaoh is thinking about like oh a foul Tomokuba and then Pegasus goes ah oh, I see a foul Tomokuba. He didn't really he didn't immediately pick up like this guy's reading my mind. Right, like there there's I give the telepathy a bit more pass. I do not give the fact of everything else a pass so much, you know? I mean, even Yuri, as much as I hate to give him credit, is picking up on Twilight's identity faster. Yeah. Than anybody else is picking up on anything. Right. It's yeah. crazy. Like, Yuri, who's the character that I hate the most in this series, other than, like, the 75 other kids that aren't Anya. Uh,. Yeah, and so, isn't the main point I, of the series that he's meant that he's meant to be um that he's meant to be um assassinating this uh oh what's his face? Uh da Damien's uh, father. Yeah. Well I mean he I he's think stabilizing, the main was to either assassin or at least defuse the situation. Yeah. But like basically I mean, have they had really any meaningful interactions since they uh, since he was first introduced? They met once. Yeah. But have they had any other ones? No. No. So basically, the main character has only met the main antagonist. What technically the main antagonist once? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it depends if you consider Anya the main character, not because. No, no. <laughs> Lord, Lloyd is technically considered the main character. It's it's well, said then, yes. it's said on the Heroes Wiki on the on the um Spikes Family well, Wiki you, that you Lloyd can't is take a the main fan character. wiki as a hundred percent lore on... either. No, you can't. But. I feel like Lloyd. I mean, uh, I we mean, haven't. I can understand the argument, but it just that it feels like. I mean, Lloyd does have like more backstory, but it feels like Anya gets more yeah. Of the yeah. screen time. So yeah. I've always considered her more of a protagonist. Because we spend a lot more time with Anya's school adventures than exactly. If you Lloyd's want it to missions. be, if you want it to be just a school adventure that just happens to have spies in it, make it that. I mean, they kind of well, have by this that. point. <laughs> Like, unfortunately, that's um, why it's turned into. I do into. wanna go ahead. I do wanna say something though that's a bit to the contrary of what we've been saying. That is, I think the recent chapters um that I've been reading, they seem to be building up something a little bit more. I mean, maybe that's just me being delusional, because <laughs> I could just be delusional at this point reading the series. But with the new like grandparent figures. And some of the lines they, they've kind of alluded to, and even Anya, um, like, figuring out how her name is spelled. It seems like there are clues that we're going to get more into Anya's backstory after all this time. 
and that uh, the scientists that or the sorry, the uh, new neighbors will be important figures. So I feel like right now in the story, we're tracking a bit more. And I will also say that the Red Circus arc, it was, I think the last arc before this, that those were all solid. And we got a chapter with Lloyd's, or not Lloyd's, yours, co-workers, uh, and like her perspective on the war, because she got mm-hmm. to meet the, the counselor's wife. So there were some solid chapters in recent years. So I think Spy Family is at least heading in a better direction than it was. Having said that, the most recent chapter, I think, is what I thought um, a lot of this conversation should be. Because that was probably, I think, because I was having, being more optimistic with the recent chapters. That chapter was, like, very disappointing because it's the definition of a missed potential. Because they set up a murder mystery in a ski lodge. Mm-hmm. But and at first I thought, okay, this will be an interesting scenario. It's kind of like we're in Case Closed or Detective Conan, whatever you want to call it, where the child knows the answer to the mystery, but because they're a child, no one's going to take them seriously. So they need to figure out how to convey that information to the adults who are like the capable ones. Uh, but instead, they kind of just showed it's like between your. Uh, Lloyd and Anya that this situation meant absolutely nothing and they ended the whole thing in like one chapter which was sad for me because I'm like dang it I was just starting to feel positive about this series again yeah like I, I'll, I'll give like the Red Circus stuff a lot more credit than like a lot of the other stuff but like there, there's so much missed potential for the the conversations that could have been had between the kids, the headmaster, the, the like, everything else there that was in the background. I I just wish that more would have been done with this, instead of, like, being wrapped up, like you said, in, like, one chapter. That Where it seems like there's nothing that could have changed. I, do, I really don't think there's any change that can happen to the series that makes it a 100% positive again, like those first few arcs, right? <laughs> Because there's been um, so much misstep in how they've handled all of the drama in the background and all of the intrigue that was there from those that initial bit that got insane popularity. That now, you, I, I don't really see it being talked about as much. But it's crazy popular, but I don't see it in conversation, right? Whereas I see more conversation about Yozakor family as the counter to it. It now than I, I think did. That also anything. just might be our bubble, though. To yeah, be fair, it might, it might just it, be. It all... could be. It could it very could... well be it. I um, mean, um, I mean, considering so like... when Spy Family anime comes out and people are excited for it, I'm like, but how? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm just waiting for the moment where, um, where. Uh, when the Osako family anime co- comes out, and I'm just uh, and people, the big anime YouTubers are just being like, "Oh, this series is really amazing. This series is uh, so, just being like crazy." If they're crazy positive by it, we'll be there saying like, "We've been saying this for the past two years." It's actually a rather point. optimistic take. I feel like it's going to go under the radar. It probably will go under the radar. It, 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 I don't think it'll go under the radar fully. I, I do think it'll not get as much coverage as Spy Family does when no. it drops. No, like, it I won't. Figure, it... I figure when the, the movie drops, we'll see another cycle of like it being popular again because it's like the first big anime. I think it's the first big anime movie of the year. Um. Yeah, I think so, technically. Yeah, but, and, and then, well, I mean, if you want to really count the first big anime movie of the year, you got the, the re-release of Final Fantasy Advent Children and then Spy Family. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I I literally just got tickets to see the, the re-release of it <laughs> today. Oh, well, that's oh, me. Well. Yeah. Um, but I'm just going to say, like, um, you're, uh, I know you don't like him, uh, Vex, but Yuri is just being like so wasted in the series because it's like now that he's starting to really figure out, like, um, start to put two and two together, like, oh, Lloyd, maybe Twilight. Mm-hmm. Why hasn't he gone? Because he, he hates Lloyd for being with his sister, right? Why doesn't he use this as an opportunity to be like, hey, maybe this guy is not who you think he is? Yeah, I, I think it comes down and to the he... fact that he doesn't want to hurt his sister either. Because he sees that there is true love there, right? But he also has his mission, right? So he has that conflict. I think that's one of the better developed bits in the series, as much as I fucking hate Yuri. 
like I think it's one of the better he's one of the better developed characters in the series because he does realize that, that there is something there between the two of them. Um but yeah, you're right like it, it, the the forgotten country side of him should come out and just take over because that's what his job is. It's yeah. what he's meant to do. Yeah. Cuz it's like it's like um it's like uh, I'm just going to use this as uh, I'm just going to use this as an example. It's like if I if I was just being like, hmm, I really don't trust my sister's fiance, and then I find out something, I'm like, wait, isn't uh, wait, isn't this the guy who's meant to be marrying my sister? I'd be like going straight over to be like, hey, sis, maybe you should be like f- uh, keeping tabs on this guy. Obviously, obviously, that's not the case. My uh, my sister's fiance is really great. He's a great guy for her. Yeah, like I don't know. Like, like I, I mean, said, I don't think I will say a lot. with Yuri. I think they're also trying to take his story in a bit of a different direction with that new um, female partner of his. I forgot her name, so I'm just calling her that. Uh, so I think they're gonna just kind of have Yuri sidelined for a little bit, which I don't mind. I really don't like. Uh, him well, much it, it, well, here's the thing. I think that will make Fex very, very happy. True. And I'm also glad that they're giving Damien more with his sibling um, now in the picture because we heard a lot about him, but he just finally showed up. I do think Spy Family is at least semi-recovering, but I agree with Vex that it's hard for it to ever like go back to 100%, both because of its own pacing and because, you know, we've been burned before on things. So at yeah. this point, I think most of the... Most of the excitement of Spy Family is just going to be over the anime just because of the work that Cloverworks and... Who's the other studio working on this? Which studio I think it is. I believe so, yeah. Oh, yeah, Wit, right. Yeah, yeah Cloverworks um, and Wit are doing but yeah, with the that, anime. That's another thing with Spy with Spike's Family. Like, just the pacing as well is just being so wasted because especially during the um, boat arc, like, that arc was such a pain to get through. What, you didn't really enjoy was. these seven picture chapters followed by like the 18.1 and point two chapters to you, get what you, could have been? You, you obviously enjoyed them, Vex, because <laughs> you decided with Red to review them. I honestly protested a lot of that. I'm just like, fuck it, whatever. Um, but I like... Mean, it's... <laughs> Yeah, and apparently the anime it's better i guess because my friend who watched yeah, that, it was that, like yeah it was pretty good that ma- that makes sense i would be better in the anime because they don't have to suffer from like okay oh we're gonna have a week off to just show one uh to show five minutes of one uh of one scene of your 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 and Anya walking in the snow uh, uh, uh don't forget like the famous like feet picture uh <laughs> Your like unironically hey, wanting hey, to make fe- a feet finder page for your fe- fe- fex. Imagine if imagine if um, imagine if that had Diva Tox's voice over your with that foot. No, foot yes, no. Like I I I I will simp for Diva Tox, but I I could not unhear that if that was real. Oh, uh, like just having D- Diva Tox there being like, "Hey, Algar, wanna rub my feet?" <laughs> Fuck you for that! Oh God! Uh, God so what else do we have on the list? Uh, <laughs> we have, um, uh, uh, I guess since we, I guess since the, uh, since the uh, right next to each other, Yosakura family. Yeah, might as well. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, uh, and also because I had a I had a point I wanted to say in regards to that. Yeah, it's probably going to go under the radar, and no better way as this uh, as this uh, comes to me is when I saw a, I saw a video of um, Joey the Anime Man at Shonen Jump at the Shonen Jump convention uh, earlier this year, where he he did praise Witch Watch. He said Witch Watch is probably one of the most underrated series in, in Jump right now, which it is. It really yep. is. And we'll go more into that tomorrow. But when he got to Yozakura family, he was like, I have no idea what this series is all about, but I'm interested in this cat. We're obviously referring to Goliath. And I'm just there thinking like, dude, that's so obviously a dog. Even if I didn't know the series, I'd be like, that is so obviously a dog. 
Eh, I mean, if, if you have seen uh, Goliath in certain frames, I could see how they'd be confused. Because mm-hmm. we don't know how many pictures of Goliath or which pictures they saw. Yeah. Also, was... the fact that, like... Also, there they, are... are you sure they were talking about Goliath? They could have been talking about Kinko. No, 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 they were talking about Goliath. They would specifically point to Goliath. Okay, I was more just making a joke. But, yeah. No. But, um... And it go, uh, you, you as a current family. Go uh, yeah, yeah. Time. I feel like one of the most wasted potentials for me, and I generally do love this series. I, um, uh, yeah, I am, you do like one of the only reviews. Yeah, on well, it. considering I'm committed to reviewing it to the end, like I'm generally, I generally do love the series, even though I've, I, I kind of agree with you. Like the last few, um, uh, the last few, um, chapters have been a little bit like, um, up and down, up and down. It's only, now that we're like actually getting into like some theories that I'm like, okay, this has been confirmed for me. Um, and I'm like, okay, I'm really starting to get, it's really starting to pick up for, pick up for me, especially the, uh, even though the last chapter was really short, just the fact that we're, fa- we're probably going to find out what um, Hiofumi's blooming is in the next couple yeah, of chapters. I mean, to be fair, that's not just Yozakura. I think, you know, there's a lot of series that are only just starting to pick back up on interest. I mean, we were just talking about Spy Family, but yeah. also for uh, me, Akane, over the last couple chapters has, like, recovered my interest a lot. Because yeah. it was never bad, but it's like now things are getting well. Well, it, well, that's kind of the thing with um, all, all series. You kind of have those points where, which is why I hate it when people when people are just like, Oh, why are we having these moments when it's um so much down? We want just action, action, action. Just like let the authors catch a bre- let us catch our breath for a bit. Yes, they're not as interesting, but we've got to at least let people catch our breaths. Um, but yeah, one of the main um things that I think has been wasted with Yosuko family is just the overheads, the other Yosuko heads, because mm-hmm. we had that one. Um, mm-hmm. we had that like um uh, stretch of chapters where we were focusing like okay, we're getting into like finding out more about the other heads of the family and then the and then creature takes them out or all, all in one go and they've kind of been like it's almost like they never existed to begin with and i thought like my god we could have had so much interest in because what because uh, it's just been one of my big problems with the series as a whole as a whole it's like where are the aunts and uncles of the osakura siblings yeah, and I remember like when that fight happened, we were all thinking that they would still like come back in some capacity, but they yeah. just haven't. So, <laughs> no, exactly, yeah. like they're because you would think because it's not like the Yosuko family in the series is like an un- is like a really unknown family. It's like one of the biggest like spy family, spy assassin families in the in the whole world of Yosuko family. So you think there'll be more members than just like the siblings and Momo, Ri, and the and the grandparents and the, uh, and that's it. Well, I mean that aspect, I think at least for me, was mostly answered with Asa's reveal um, just because he's been harvesting them for generations. I mean, then you could also make the argument like, okay, but then how come this wasn't brought up? And I guess you could say that the answer to that question is that the siblings didn't know because their parents protected them from that information yeah. while they were trying to do something about Asa. So for I think in that regard, I'm okay with them not being too many branch families because Either you know they're in hiding from Asa, or they're just dead, and that's fine. If if it came out and that was the reason, I'd be like, okay, that's fine. That's that's fair. That's fair enough. But I would have at least liked it to have been hinted at. Like, uh, say say if uh, say at some point, like they just asked Momo, it's like, why haven't we ha- heard anything from Extin family? And Momo's just there, like, we must, um, we can't talk about that. Why? I just don't want. Well, we just I mean, can't. to be fair, if they just left it like that, you still would have been like, "But we still don't know." To be no, fair. no, I would have been. I would have been like, if if somebody had just come out like, "We can't talk about this," I would have been more forgiving of it. It's like, okay, <laughs> there has to be a reason for it why they can't why they can't talk about. It, but as opposed to just never mentioning I, them, I feel like if they did that, then you'd be like, "Well, they have to tell us eventually," because then it's just like a Chekhov's gun situation yeah. where they brought up a situ a thing but didn't deliver on it. Mm. So that's why I think with Asa's at least when he it, talked about having done this for generations it i felt like it was implied which, enough. which i feel like this is probably what asses like i said in one of my recent but pieces, i would say th- I, i'm just gonna go off from my thought yeah, go ahead, um, finish your thought. this uh, this is what i feel like 
is going to be Arthur's main plan. It's like he wants the Yosakuras to get like uh, to awaken their uh, all their bloomings, their true spring bloomings. Just because I feel like his ability, if he does, if he does have a blooming himself, is probably going to be like steal. Uh, it's negate because he was able to negate Karicho's void blooming and then be able to steal him. So it'll probably be a combination a combination of uh, two abilities from my hero academic like one for all's like um ability to just steal other quirks i feel like that's what as's main ability is going to be to steal the bloomings yeah yeah and i think that's a good theory but um, what i was going to say is now that we have the the twins um and at some point uh, they themselves could potentially bring up like what were your aunts and uncles like, and I guess then that could be a way to address if, it like real quick. If they if they did bring that up, I'd be like, okay, that. Uh, and I'm going on record saying, if they brought if they brought that up, I'll be like, okay, I guess all my I guess all my um, complaints of not knowing what happened to the aunts and uncles there they finally been answered. So thank you, sir. It's that I'm going on record saying that now. Okay, okay. that's good. <laughs> um, but yeah, with the Ozakura, I think one of our server members and mutuals, uh, SkyZ, uh, he's brought up, and I think this is a legitimate criticism, that with the Ozakura family, the title, of course, means that we're going to be spending most of our time with the family. But the series had like a pretty extensive like support cast who kind of pops in and out, but they become less and less relevant as the story has went along. And maybe much like... um. Uh, with the other heads of the Yozakura family, the reason for their like uh, exodus from the series is just largely due to um, the series like feedback from like editors, higher ups, and the fan base in Japan. As far as we know, we don't know what their thinks thoughts are on the series, but maybe they just didn't care as much for these characters, and so they just kind of like pushed them aside and focused on the ones that we really cared about. And I think. I could understand, you know, from a business perspective of why they would want to just, like, you know, keep the fan base happy. But at the same time, like, when when I do see the fan base discussing these side characters, I kind of don't even remember what, most of what they do. I'll be, when I watch the anime, I'll be like, oh, yeah, that's what that character was about. I haven't seen them in, like, years now. So um, I am looking forward to that in the anime, but I do think it was kind of a waste for like some of the subplot lines with like those characters, like because we could have had more with Kyuichiro's like school days and his early years with the people who knew him before he was like this like obsessively protective over his family because he was always a bit weird. But yeah. I don't. He's gotten like much worse over the period of time. Better oh. in some ways, but worse in other ways. So oh. that would have been nice to see. Yeah, and, and then we also could have had like, um, like Nanano had like a friend in school, like with a biology club. Yeah, I thought that was setting up a love interest for him, but we haven't seen that girl in forever. So there was a lot of characters that could have helped flesh out our cast even more. Like Tayo, I think he had other friends in school besides Mutsumi, but we yeah, haven't he seen did. them. We, but we haven't seen them. But I feel like the author has kind of um, seen those kind of criticisms and kind of um, sort of rectified them with um, with like the um, gold with like the uh, gold rank um, spies. So you have like Ryu, you have Mo Mozu, you have Kai as being like. Um, three major characters at the at this moment in the story because it's like we're whole. Yeah, but I think I, I think ahead. that's kind of like the sh battle shonen effect yeah. where eventually you have characters or sorry battles that are so high level that weaker rank characters just aren't relevant to the fights anymore, and so they just don't appear as much in the story. We see them like Dragon Ball, like especially for how long it's been going on. Yeah, but I feel so. Like... I think. Oh, go ahead. That's probably why. Yeah, but, yeah. I was just gonna say that's probably why it's mostly just the gold ranks going. Yeah, ahead. yeah. Because I feel like because uh, it's been confirmed now that basically all of Asa's quote unquote children have bloomings. They're gonna have. They're all gonna have bloomings, and they're probably all gonna mm -hmm. be um, really pow really powerful. So like you need like the top echelon of the series to take them down. Um, but it, I, I, I'm waiting for the moment. Like if it, if it, if we actually do get to see um, Ryu with a blooming. That would be insane, like, if he if he was able to get a blooming because of, like, all the harvesting Asa has done over the years. <laughs> um, but, yeah, 
I really, like I said, uh, I really wish we uh, had more with uh, Kirichol's, like time at school, especially with um, his relationship with Kai, because it's very interesting if you look at Kai's relationship with um, Kirichol. It's eerily similar to the relationship Mutsumi has with Tayo. Yeah. 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 Because right down to the point that Kai has a scar on the opposite side that Tayo has. Like if you look yeah, at that, I really thought that was going to lead to more, but it really didn't. No, it didn't. Like, but no, it. Uh, which I've always said, like this is probably the reason why Kirito tolerates Tayo, and it probably kills him inside. It's like I want to kill this guy, but God, he he reminds me so much of my best friend. I can't do it. it it's strange. Like for me. There's definitely like that aspect of it, right? But I do, I do think there's like more to that story than we're actually knowing right now. Like, that needs to be dove fully into. Yeah. Just and, way in on that. A little bit. Yeah, and I feel like even <laughs> though even though he said we're kind of reaching the end of the series, I, uh, I still think like we've still got. I would say um, until. This time next year will be wind will be winding down the series to like the final battle with Asa. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, I'd say sometime early twenty twenty five. So that's about yeah. right. It's kind of weird to think about it when yeah. you put it that way. But yeah. I I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that April twenty twenty five uh, we might be in the final month of Yosako family. Yeah, that sounds about. I right. was thinking March, but you know that's close enough. <laughs> but yeah, so. Um, yeah, I really didn't have anything else to say about Yosuko family. All right, is, um, anything else on the list? Uh, uh we are uh, Pokemon Journeys, uh, Sword Art Online. I can't really talk about Pokemon, so you guys can uh, deal with that. <laughs> I, I have watched Journeys, so like... um, okay, so oh, this, okay. Will, so this will just be me I'll brief, leave. me briefly, um, because a lot of people, um, have um major problems with pokemon jays but that's more down to like just what was going on behind behind the uh behind the scenes but it had so much potential i i agree with that it, uh people it really did have like the most potential because it was ash's final main series and uh made uh, ash's final main se uh main series as the main as the main character so they could have gone so um gotten so much out of it um had him I had him go and do something more than just like Pokemon battling. Like I feel like that would have been a good way for Ash to end out on. Like instead of being like primarily focused on battling, because at that point he'd become a champion. So it would have been like, okay, what's the next um step for him as like a in his quest to become a Pokemon master, actually mentoring someone. Yeah. Yeah. Cause uh the cards that they had as like a, a, a as like a uh, as like the um, as like the split protagonist or like the dual protagonist was um, more focused on the catching aspects than Pokemon battling. But I feel like what Ash could have done for him is just show, showcased him like, oh no no, battling's just um, as important as the catching and. Yeah, and this and this is why I just meant to him. I, I meant to that character through a journey through the Gala region, or just through a journey, a journey like the Pokemon World, um, World um, uh, Pokemon World Championships, where they both enter at the same time. Uh, so, and then it, and then it could have eventually culminated with him and Go having a final battle with each, with each other as kind of like a parting ways for each other, um, which. Ash would have won, obviously, because he because he's Ash. You can't have him. Well, actually, well, actually, at that point, you would have been like still question like, would he lose? Would he lose? But I don't think he would have lost uh, that battle if he had a serious battle between him and uh, him and Go. And um, and it's just a series that um had characters that were coming back left, right, and set characters we hadn't seen in uh, in forever in the forever in the series and. They just do like such the bare minimum with them, and that's just what makes it the most. Uh, just makes it more disappointing than anything. If anything, I feel like what they should have done is not have journeys and just gone straight on to Pokemon Arises. Like actually end it with um, Pokemon Sun and Moon because the Sun and Moon series for Ash, I feel like ended in the absolute 
perfect way. Mm -hmm. uh, did you see the ending of uh, Pokemon Sun and Moon um, facts? I, I watched like the clips of it on YouTube because I wasn't interested because of the, the art style. It kind of was jarring. I watched... Can't say I haven't watched any of Journeys. I've watched bits and pieces of it, you know, through YouTube. Um, yeah. It's on my Netflix queue to watch, too. Just haven't got around to watching the entire thing. Yeah. Uh, you sent me, like, the the final battle and a bunch of other stuff as well when we yeah. were doing other videos. Yeah. That's about the extent of what I've seen. And I don't see where, like, there's anything overly egregious that's been done with it to the extent, like, the whole the fandom mini melting down. The um, I think the I think uh, what made it such a sour taste for people, especially the um, Masters Eight tournament, is just the fact that there were skipped weeks and recap weeks because mm -hmm. of the. But there was a reason for that. They were they were being like, okay, we can either make the final battle between Ash and Leon be the most um, awful thing possible, awful thing possible, uh, but we can make it the most awesome thing possible. But the sacrifice is that we have to take breaks and give recap weeks. Yeah. But if you actually go and watch the actual battle now that you can watch it in its entirety, it is one of the best battles in the series. And yeah. that's kind of like, uh, I, I'm kind of like split on like whether or not they should have, um, uh, they should really just have ended it with Ash there because it just seems like such a triumphant moment for Ash, like just lifting that trophy at the, at the end of Pokemon journeys and the announcement, um, uh, from the narrator being calling Ash the world's strongest trainer, it does feel that just feels so satisfying for the narrator to actually say that about the boy who uh, who um, literally got uh, who literally got. Um, uh, I'm just trying to think of the way to say this. Uh, that on uh, because of his Charizard not be, uh, obeying him in the Indigo League to now being the world's strongest trainer. Yeah, it just shows how far he he had, he had come as a character. That's that's the best way to put it, right? Because he's been clowned on for you know literally decades. You want you want to know you want to know what's funny? I'd have said this in a in a um in another server that I'm part of. Like, okay, um, are you guys familiar with the with the series Robot Wars, like the franchise Robot Wars? We have a uh, version of it. Sounds over here. familiar. Yeah, uh, where basically people build like uh, robots that they actually go into like death battles against each other. Yeah, over here, it's okay, battle bots. It sounds... uh, okay. Yeah, that yeah, I've heard of. Yeah, okay. it's uh, uh, it's something it, it's something like that. Um, but yeah, there's uh, there's a robot in there called Razor, which uh, which I'll send uh, I'll send a picture of Razor in the um, mod VC after I get off this. Um, moment but i compare that to ash because the robot always kept on losing 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 every single every single like main tournament but it would win like a bunch of side tournaments mm -hmm. and then it eventually did win like um one of the one of the main tournaments so it's like this is basically ash in robot form <laughs> yeah like like I was saying, like, for decades we've clowned on ash for not winning or not really progressing as a protagonist and then you finally like as we're wrapping up his story arc, we're getting a moment where, like, he, he actually achieves his goal. He's kind of, like, become the best of the best, right? He obviously hasn't become, like, a Pokemon master to the extent, like, we traditionally think of a Pokemon master. Yeah. Like, completing the Pokédex, you know, getting, you know, max EV, IV bullshit going on. But, well, like, he, he has the power of plot armor and having achieved, like, championship status, right? Yeah. So he's as close to a Pokemon master as, he, as you're going to get with him at this mm -hmm. point. Uh, and he actually says, like, his main thing about being a Pokemon master was never being, like, the strongest trainer in the world. It was just being, having the ability to prevent any Pokemon he comes across, which does fit his character. And look at, like, all of the insane shit he's done through the movies, through the show. Like, he's, he's befriended legendary Pokemon. He's, you know, saved the world countless times. He's beat Team Rocket more times than you can count. He, like, he has done everything that a protagonist in a children's show should be able to do, right? Like, he has become the foil for, like, 20-some years for kids to kind of, like, be a part of, right? Uh, and then start their own Pokemon journey and, you know, go out and... You know, play the games and buy the merch and go, like, basically kill each other for a Van Gogh Pokemon uh, card. <laughs> you know? Yeah. 
Like, it's, it's fucking crazy what this franchise has done with one protagonist. Like, one main protagonist. Now that we have a second one, and we see, like, the internet meltdown on that more. I'm seeing yeah, because they're like... Yeah, because it's like they've been begging for changes in the Pokemon line for years, and then when they actually get the biggest change, it's like, no, we want it back, we want it back, we want Ash back again. But you, you bitched for 20 years to let Ash progress and move on, right? And now that he's moved on, you don't yeah. want that. I think it, I think it's because, like, uh, because uh, I've watched um, a good chunk now of... Um, Pokemon, uh, Pokemon Journeys, uh, not Pokemon Journeys, Pokemon Arise. It's, it's because like it's such a jarring um, departure for, from it that people don't know how to feel about it. Because most of like the Ash journey was like episodic episode of the uh, episode of the week introduced the Pokemon. Whereas like with Horizons, they're they're like, no, we're legitimately going to tell a story with these characters. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and and it's just like uh, and Lika as a protagonist is like the complete opposite of Ash like because uh, Ash was more of like the uh, extrovert like uh, happy go lucky hyperactive character whereas Lika was more like a reserved character but mm -hmm. and wears her emotions on her shoulder and is always like thinking about like what others think about her right like there's yeah. it, it's like a big departure from what I've seen of her and like, the, there's nothing wrong with being a stark departure from your original protagonist, right? Like, look look at the difference in Chainsaw Man, which we're going to get to here in a few minutes. Like, yeah. of, like, Asa and Dingy, for example. They're, like, yeah. two completely fucking different characters. You have one who's seemingly sex-repulsed in Asa, and you have one that is, like, the horny, stereotypical teenage boy in Dingy, right? You yeah. You have the insane like i want to do all of the things because i i've come from poverty and nothingness and then the one who's like i just want to kill myself basically and also right like at the beginning of the part two of chainsaw man like she was literally suicidal right so like you you have two completely different protagonists and they do it well there i i think it's the target demographic of pokemon and the actual people that watch it continue to be completely different things, right? You have 20, 30-somethings watching it instead of, like, 9, 10-year-olds, right? Uh, and, and there's nothing wrong with, you know, watching that. I mean, Luke, you and I are both watching Bluey right now. <laughs> A yeah. show that's made for fucking preschoolers, right? Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, watching something completely outside of your age demographic, as long as, like, you can understand the messages in it and everything. Like, obviously, I don't want, like, a five-year-old watching fucking Game of Thrones. I'm not, you know, saying that that's a smart idea. But, I, like, there's nothing wrong with, like, older people consuming media for younger, you know, people, right? Because, like, traditionally, like, you're showing this to your kids at that age, right? You're... You know, sitting through the cartoon with your children, that kind of thing. Like, you want to have something that you can attach to. What I've, what better than, like, oh, I remember Pokemon from when I was a kid. What the hell is this kind of thing, right? Um, yeah. So, that's, that, I feel like a lot of that's what's happening right now. Because uh, our generation is having their kids, and the generation after us is having maybe their first kids. You know, so they're, yeah. they're kind of... You know, feeding off of nostalgia, which is like the world's biggest market right now. Oh, absolutely. Um, and I feel like a lot of people now, uh, a lot of like more, um, people start to see like, oh wait, um, we're not, we're not like Ash because a lot of people are, uh, I'd say more introverted than they would like to believe, uh, than they would like to, um, let, um let people know. So I feel like a lot of more people would nowadays latch on to Lee as protagonist than Ash. Very much so. Yeah. Um but yeah that's all I wanted to say on po on Pokemon uh, on Pokemon Journey. Yeah. So well uh, if you guys could take the reins for this uh, for the next one while I go uh, while I just go to the toilet. Yeah. Um okay. so which um, one do you want to do here? Do we have we got Dr. Stone. We, we have got... Chainsaw Man, which we were still like, I don't know if Red's showing up. And he has the answered other one. my last message. Uh, so fuck him. Uh, 
uh, Sword Art Online, Domestic Girlfriend, uh, Chainsaw Man, Doctor Stone, and then you had one you were going to add to it, so we could do that one while you're. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, I just kind of. So while you were, you know, on like a bit of a break, and I was, I was like brainstorming, like you know, what kind of content I could like kind of bring to the table, like potentially even just like solo, like uh, scripted stuff, because that's I think something. That if I actually put time into, like, I could actually make something pretty decent out of it. Um, and one of the things that I was thinking about was to do something with Cypher Academy, because that recently ended. And I thought about maybe making something like, oh, the unexpected uh, hit f- surprise for me, or the hidden gem of the magazine. Because I feel like that's what it'll be referenced as um, after the way it ended. Because it's one of those series that. It may or may not have been axed, um, because the way it ended, it feels like, yeah, this is a good ending place, but it also had, like, one of those time-skipped things that axe series have that it's like, yeah, this is stuff that happened in the background that our characters didn't get a chance to resolve. Um, So, if it was axed, though, I did think that there was a lot of more potential for this series going forward. Like, one of the things that they kind of resolved in the background... Um, and I don't really mind spoiling this because I don't think you're planning on reading this nope. anytime, Vex. But there was a, um, there was like a message that our characters received that seemed like a, a prisoner of war who had who was sending out a message. Um, and in that message, they kind of had to decode like what was going on. They were called like the dancing soldier because the message was sent to them via a dance that the the prisoner was doing, and so. It had a lot of interesting aspects to it because, like, in the background of Cypher Academy, and we got this more and more in the very last arc, there are, like, just several ongoing, like, world wars. And our characters are basically thinking how to handle that situation because they're children growing up in a time where they've all been affected by the consequences of war and how their families are personally intertwined in that conflict and how they themselves were intertwined in the conflict. Our protagonist was a prisoner of war for a good bit of time, too. That was, like, part of his backstory. Um, and so I thought this series had, like, so much potential to kind of make more commentary on war, especially because, like, the way a lot of the uh, the background characters, when they finally got their time to shine in the last arc and gave their perspectives on, like, their fears and their concerns and how they want to resolve the conflicts, or in some cases, for some characters, create conflicts. Uh, I thought like this would have been a very interesting way to kind of like follow up on all these and like the world outside of the academy, um, especially as like new students came into it because like the time skip had them all being like senior year basically of the school, so they were now underclassmen, and I thought that would have been a whole thing. They could dig into so yeah i might still end up doing that cypher video i don't know but if i don't i at least wanted to and like tag that in in this topic because i think it's at least slightly relevant to like a series that had a lot of potential but at least the author ended it on in a good way where like most of the people who stuck with it um, such as myself actually like really liked what we had and i'm not saying the series didn't have its flick flaws because it had st- the stupidest puzzles ever to the point where the translator, the first translator just like just gave up <laughs> and they had to replace them. Um, and, you know, kudos to like the current translator. Your, your time is over. You can rest now. <laughs> uh, but my God, like I think I was talking to someone who's a little more familiar with the Japanese language and they said, no, even the Japanese speakers would have some trouble with this. Cause these are very tricky. Like, puzzles and it requires so much obscure knowledge to actually be able to solve it and i've always preferred like puzzles um and uh intellectual or brain series whatever you want to call them where you can kind of piece things together yourself but you couldn't in cypher academy you kind of just had to like basically wait for it but at the same time it i think the characters and the atmosphere and a lot of the like, the sub stories were still interesting enough that the series definitely deserved its place in the magazine, um, and maybe it really did just get axed because like the central core of it being a puzzle series just was not very well done. Uh, so you know it's a, probably another axe that's like yeah I understand why it had to get canceled, but if it did I'm glad it got canceled the way it did, but it was a series with a lot more 
I think that the author could like deliver on and considering, you know, the author is a veteran, I'm sure they'll come back with more. So no worries on that front. Yeah. Like uh, there's uh, as much as I didn't like the series, like I gave it like five, 10 chapters to kind of try and get my interest. And it's just like, it didn't, uh, for various reasons, mostly like it, a lot of it went over my head and a lot of the topics and it just seemed a little too on the nose for me. Um, you the way you describe it, it did get better um i would love to see you make that video uh because i feel like yes 100 percent like scripted content definitely like given the fact that you can write a script in the comments <laughs> uh like yeah like for those that... <laughs> who've been with the community for a long time you know that i have i basically just talked my way into a hosting role somehow <laughs> like I straight up like I feel like that's a great form of content for you, but like there as you know how the meme of like the anyone could write this, but only this author could write this kind of thing. Like I only think that this author could handle this particular series. Like anybody yeah, anybody can write a time paradox ghost writer. Only Nielsen could uh fucking write Cypher Academy, okay? Like it yeah. is insane. And I think I saw somebody say, like, I just kind of wanted to throw this in because I thought it was an interesting idea that one time in Jump, they should just have, like, the writers being like, hey, you guys should, like, write a chapter, like a non-canonical chapter of each other's series just to see, like, how that would turn out. Yeah, I saw that. I think that would be kind that. of an interesting idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm but just you're right. No one could really do Cypher very well, at oh. least at the level you shouldn't do. I'm just gonna say on that front, that would that would be quite interesting for like say an anniversary um, like volume of uh, Jump where it's like okay we're taking a break from our regular series and here's a one shot um, of from older about say Witch Watch or here's a uh, uh, here's one from Tabata about uh, Mission Yosuko family. Yeah, like here here is fucking. Ignoraki doing a My Hero Academia, you know, something like that would be really cool to yeah. see. Um, um, but like, but... I I genuinely do think that this is one of the most talented authors in manga, like one hundred percent. So I do hope that they get to come back to jump instead of like what they normally do with like Monogatari, um, because it was a nice departure from their normal content. Um, but I do I do want them to tackle something other than you know, political, you know, dialogue and source code or like Morse code and like puzzles and stuff like that. Cause I, I, I genuinely tuned out like pretty quickly on this one, even though I'm a huge fan of the author. Um, yeah. And you mentioned party jobs. Now the translator can, uh, take a break. Yeah. Now, now we, now we have to feel sorry again for the translator of which what. Yeah. I mean, yeah, their suffering will be very long, indeed. Yeah. Uh, but we'll talk more about that with our Witch Watch discussion, which will be um, uploaded a different day. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this this is definitely not getting uploaded today. I'm going to let Red try and get, you know, the, the freaking uh, has been um, up. But uh, Sword Art Online is a good one to kind of um, tie back into here because, like, I... I'm making, well, I'm not making, Luke is doing this of his own volition. Yeah, not I being, am doing this of my not, own free will. He is not being held in a basement, you know, MAPA style, chained to a radiator. Well, well, te well, technically, I am in a basement with a radiator right shush, next to me. Shush, shush, you're not a prisoner of war. <laughs> No, I'm a, no, yeah, I'm a, just had that. no, um, no, I, I, I'm a, pri I'm a prisoner, I'm a prisoner of a pussycat. Okay, that's uh. <laughs> um, but yeah, my experience with Sword Online is an interesting one to say the least. Uh, like, there's a video I think it, I think is unless of like breaking Luke or some shit like that. I yeah, it. yeah, where where I where I reacted um, live in the moment to it's Season been so one finale. <laughs> it's been so long. I've forgotten the reason. To the point that I had to create a, uh, a a character just off the bat, Pillow Sama, just because I needed something to scream into. 
Uh, well, I can't, yeah, I can't Colin... wait for you to deal with Alicization. Uh, oh, oh, I'm sure you can't. And, um, but yeah, and I've yeah got when a... you get to that, let me know because Alicization is where I need to pick up uh, yeah, the series got, as well. I've got to I'm say, I'm using you as an excuse to get back into right. series because I heard good things about Alicization, but I just fell so behind once it came out, like in terms of like other seasonal stuff to watch. So, I mean, it's baby's first isekai as well. Uh, let's not even try and mince words about it. Um, I, I I mean, you got to get on the isekai trend, I guess. (laughs) Like it's my guilty pleasure series, but dear fucking Lord, there's, there's so much wrong with it. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I've literally, literally, um, have the everything wrong with SAO, um, uh, document, uh, which I'm still, which I'm still going through. Um, cannot so... wait for that to be as long as one of Karahara's fucking light novels. <laughs> oh, oh, like, oh, oh, like I said, like I said, Vex, um, to, to you, um, uh, slight preview for our Power Rangers Dino Thunder, um, video. I've been through, I've been through, um, the, um, clip show anniversary episode uh, for Dino Thunder and there's like and there's like two to three pages of notes of just everything wrong with that everything wrong with that one episode. Jesus Christ. Um but yeah um so what what did uh uh what did I have as like what one of the things that lit uh, that I was literally thought was so wasted potential is um is uh how uh, is uh, Asuna and Kirito's relationship? I'm just being like, yeah. How does this go from uh, two? Well, I guess because they were in the game for two years. Um, but seriously, how do they go from kids who don't know how to interact with each other to hey, we're going to be parents to uh, this AI artificial intelligence? You, you, like chat I still GPT like the UE over there. I stand behind that. Yui like really added a lot for me. Yeah, as much as I hate Yui as a character because like she's just plot armor one hundred and one for them for like a lot of what goes on in the game, like she definitely added to the dynamic of their relationship and gave them like a weight and a responsibility, much like a real kid gives weight and responsibility to you know parents uh, to a couple, right? But like the it's the way they handled her introduction that really kind of annoyed me. Uh, and yeah. then Asuna's, like, immediate motherly instincts taking over, like, it's a small child, we must protect it. it meanwhile, it's, like, the fucking self-defense, like, mental health program that's built into the game. Um, the big one for me was, like, Wrath Technologies taking over from what the uh, Kayaba's um, organization was doing with the, um, like, nerve gear and shit, right? Like, that, that whole thing there uh, kind of drove me a little bit insane for a bit i'm like okay well we obviously need to have the creepy fucking rapey dude you know be a villain in some regard so let's have a bunch of people just randomly disappear from the hospital and be test subjects for this new technology that's based on the old technology from the first season or the first part or the first core i guess this was like before they were called yeah cores. um Let's, let's have him, like, abduct a bunch of people and the cops nor the staff or anybody that's sh- the special forces that we're dealing with the fucking SAO incident. None of them notice a bunch of people just randomly disappear. You know, that that whole thing there. Um, and uh, to to give credit to Kahara, like, he has strayed away from using sexual assault as a plot device, which is... You know, growth, I guess. Like, I don't understand why there's so it's much. It's funny. It's like, hey, good job. Good job. You're not using rape in your story anymore. Yeah, Not to not to deter from the fact that there are literally chapters dedicated to the in the no- light novels, right? Um, I mean, he, I don't yeah, want to say in um, his defense because that's just so creepy. But also, I've, a lot of dark fantasy series I've read involve it to some extent. So right. it's not like it it hasn't been in stories, but... I guess in a modern context, you got to be a lot more careful how you use it. Right. Like, there, I, I, as somebody that listens to a lot of like smutty, like you know, dark fantasy stuff as well, like it's used and to varying extents in like regular dark fantasy and then like your, you know, like spicy stuff, right? But there's a lot to be said about like also in this context, having 
another person act out that scene, right? Like, Game of Thrones obviously did it um, to an extent in the show. Um, but, like, v there's traumatic energy being put onto not one, but two, three, four, five different localization teams have to add act out that in this context, right? Because it's being dubbed in multiple languages and also, like, all of that. And you're now having to retroactively be like, I never thought that it would get, like, an anime adaptation because it started as a web novel, right? So, he's like, fuck. Hey, guys, I've, I've grown. I was, like, a teenager when I started this, you know? So, let's not deter from the fact that I'm passing trauma on to, like, the, the voice actors and stuff. But I'm not going to have that in stuff like Unital Ring and all that, you know, moving forward. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that I feel like is probably my, the worst potential for um, for Sword Art Online in, in general is that there's hardly any interactions with the main antagonist. I don't know if you noticed that. Oh, no, 100%. It's kind of weird, isn't it? Like, there's... Yeah. There's, like... <sighs> You would think. Go go ahead. I don't want to say there's like no interaction. Cause... Oh no, I don't want to say that as well. But it's just like um, you could really have like you you couldn't really have um, say more than just one episode or one uh, or or one or two uh, one or two more scenes with um, like a decent amount of interactions with the antagonist um, before we actually get into the final con conflict. Yeah, Alice's Asian handles it a little bit better, um, I will say, in that regard. Um, yeah. Um, it's like a whole war for the underworld in that, right? So you have oh, factions okay. and factions of people uh, kind of dealing with stuff. But yeah. uh, um, I, I will say, like, the movie that ties between, um, like, Gungale, Mother's Rosario, all that stuff, right? The The... Movie that's right. between season two, well, we'll just call it a fucking season two, and season three, which is Alicization, Ordinal Scale. It handles a lot of like the relationship and like the backstory for like Kayaba a bit more, and it's canon to the show, and it's canon to the light novels and all that. So like, you gotta watch that. And I think it's on Crunchyroll. I'm not right. entirely oh. sure. Right. Um, fair, fair enough. Um, but. There was also one other thing that really irked me um, about the whole experience of going from like when Kirito and everyone gets out of uh, SA SAO and it's not brought up until the uh, until uh, really brought up until the gun gale arc is Kirito's PTSD about having having to actually shoot and kill people. Yeah. I mean, it did come up still eventually. <laughs> eventually, yeah. but it's like it, it really the whole. Um, Really, uh, alf, uh, alf line or uh, alfin, uh, or whatever you want to call it, the Alfheim. second part, yeah, really should have had more more focus on um, Kirito having PTSD but, of being in a of being in a virtual reality uh, MMO for two years. But like, there were no real stakes other than getting Asuna back. There wasn't a death game aspect to it, right? Um, yeah, it was just like, well, Asuna's missing, and so are these other players, right? Um, so we kind of need you to go into the game and kind of figure things out, you know, in the background that, that sort of, you know, part of like saving my waifu basically plot. Right. But like, there was yeah. no real stakes. There was like, no, like, well, if you don't do the thing, then she's going to die or any, any of that to weigh in. And also, it. also Lee, Lee, uh, Leifa should have realized instantly that Oh, this is my brother. Like, there was no... He really did not hide, like, what his avatar looks like, who it resembled. Oh, so no. she should have really yeah. realized right off the bat, this is my brother. Right, like, the, that's the fucking... The thing that kind of got me there, too. Um, But there's, there's something to be said about, like, the PTSD, because you do have a valid point, that I do wish that they had touched on that a bit more before that because you would think that, like just being in the game would yeah being it, in a, right 
yeah, being in a game world where, because uh, it's not just like the PTSD of killing a, 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 everyone, it's the PTSD of being literally spending two years inside inside a virtual world while you're not age while you're not uh well the whole world's going by after you and just coming back into the real world and just thinking like is this all real um what what is it it's it's everything and li literally and i would have loved it if um when he got back when they got back to the real world that they had more of a harder time of um of um readjusting to real life yeah uh, and like having been two years in, in a game, you know, where you're fighting for survival, and I, I want to dive a little bit deeper into this point because you brought up a valid one. Like you're having to deal with like physical rehabilitation, have to like cram school to get everything done because we see like that side of things as well, right? Yeah. Um, especially in like extra edition, the like little in between seasons one part one and season one part two. You're you're seeing and you know I think it actually was like between season one part two and part uh season season one part two and season two uh is where uh extra edition actually takes place. I I can I could be wrong there, but you see like Silica's um you know person Elizabeth all of them like in this school is made specifically for people that were victims of SAO right um. And you're seeing like them have to struggle to get caught up with school and get their, their placement exams done and all this stuff because they had fallen so far behind by being in a death game for two years. But you're also seeing that they have kind of like degraded a little bit mentally as well because they're struggling deeply. And you're seeing like the, the physical rehabilitation still having like taken tolls on their body as well uh, to a degree, right? Because you see, like, I, I don't think it's, like, meant to be there, but you're seeing, like, Silica, like, cram food, right? Yeah. Because she's so small, right? And, and, like, she was the youngest of the victims, uh, to our knowledge, I believe. I'm not 100% yeah, sure. Yeah, I think she was. Um, but, but, like, yeah, all... imagine, like, a prepubescent girl being stuck in there for two years, missing out on like actual like physical growth because she's in a comatose state you, you can yeah. only imagine like from a medical perspective what that would do to the body oh absolutely absolutely and like yeah, you could have not be good you could i mean she would have been kept well alive but yeah it does yeah. affect your growth yeah. a lot and it could have been you could have had um an entire you could have had like a, a like like let's say i'm just going to use like uh, an example here climb uh Oh, however you pronounce his name, Klein. Best, Klein, best boy in the series. You could have had like a a, a um like a um subplot of him having to because what isn't he an adult? Isn't he technically an adult? Yeah, I think yeah. So. so you could He's have had like technically a, a salary man. So yeah, yeah. So you could have had like this, a, a subplot happening with him where. Uh, he he comes back into this world and his life has gone to shit. Like he's lost his job because he's been in the he's been in the state for state for two years. He's uh, lost his job to someone. Um, he's lost um he's lost several family members because they've been uh, w worried about him and what and some of them have died. Um, mm -hmm. before he could uh, before he could actually say goodbye to them. That uh, that could have been like a story in of itself. And he he's lost his apartment as well. Because yeah. he hasn't been able to pay rent or keep up with his bills. Like, that could have been a story and a half in of itself. Yeah, they expand a just, little bit on it in the light it's novel, just, but, like, not just the ram Yeah, it's just the ramifications of um, the Sword Art Online game that just makes it such, a, uh, such like, a waste of potential, uh, waste of potential for good storytelling there. Which, um, say what you want about the MCU, but at least they tried to do somewhat of that with the final snap, the ramifications of yeah. that. Yeah, you, you, you do see a little bit I more. I mean, they do that. have a whole series dedicated to that on Disney+, Plus. so yeah, I'll yeah. give you that. For sure. um, but also as well, another bit of wasted potential, which um, I believe it does happen later in the series, but Kirito not saying to um, Sinon right away that, hey, I've killed two. Yeah. Yeah, the... the... The funny thing is, like, there's little novels that take place between the the seasons one and two. They they aren't really a lot. They're like little short arcs that were you know put into the light novels, right? 
um, that weigh into little bits and pieces of what you're talking about, but they're not to the extent of like being major plot points enough to adapt, right? The, Which they they matter, to. they matter, but it would have been like an episode, right? It would have been an episode of content because they're like 30, 40 pages of like little short stories, right? That talk right. about like each character. And that's kind of like how they threw the clip show for extra edition together, you know. Right. One of those is like. I believe they adapted Kiss of Fly in that one. Uh, I'm not a a hundred percent sure on like exactly which short story it was that they adapted. Somebody can you know weigh in in the comments there. Um, but but there's there's like a little bit more done with the light novels. Is why I kind of recommend like don't go out and spend three hundred dollars on the light novels and just fucking buy the audiobooks with your Audible monthly credit if, and listen uh, to fair it. Fair enough. Um, I will. I just want to say quickly, uh, Vex, uh, because I'm watching the dub of SEO, I just find it incredibly hilarious that you have Johnny Young Bosch um, uh, uh, um, voicing Def Gun, and you have um, Michelle Ruff voicing um, Sinon. So every time I hear that, every time I hear um, um, uh, Def Gun going, Asana, 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 all I hear is just like um, Ichigo going, Rukia, I want you, I want you, I want you. <laughs> It's kind of funny, isn't it? Um, yeah. So in another universe, technically, that ship kind of sailed a little bit creepily. <laughs> well, technically, technically, in two universes, because you have in the dub of Sailor Moon, you have um, L- Luna voiced by Michelle Wolf and Artemis voiced by Johnny on Boss. That's true. I, I, I forgot about that. Um, what, what is it, what is it with, uh, with dub animes and putting those two together as potential love interests? Because they work well together, like legitimately, like having seen them at a con, like they just play off of each other naturally. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, which but, begs the que- which begs the question of like, is there is there like a secret relationship that we don't know of between the two of them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be one of those creepy pro shippers. Uh, anyway, um, the, the the thing is like. With the PTSD, I, I really, I really do like that they touched on it. But I do, I do agree. Like they could have done more between them, because it should have weighed in to like the the video game itself. But like it makes sense. Like once the stakes were raised again, for it to kind of kick in and trigger, right? Because right. you don't, you don't really think about, you know, like tying one aspect, but you tie all of the aspects together, and then it just kind of, you know, is all coming in and playing and causing like that immense fear that it, that trigger of like I might have to kill again I don't want to do that um, but there are varying uh, degrees of PTSD as well uh, so like it, it could just be the type of PTSD that is ca- has been caused by like the death game and like the, the ramifications of taking a life versus like the game itself because you know cultural culturally like video games are a big part of japanese culture right yeah uh, so like he doesn't want to like give that up but it's like once he's like dove in and like now there's actual stakes and i might die that person might die you know my teammate might die and i'm also having to learn a whole new mechanic on top of it and all of that is just compounding into one massive pile of shit for him by is like, oh, who the fuck cares? You know, I, I've done this a million times right now. Oh, uh, 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 yeah, I'm mentally preparing myself, Vex. I'm mentally preparing myself. I, I think it is one of the strongest arcs in the series, but also it is one of the most That's fucked. That's what I've heard, too. It's one of the so, most uh, fucked up, like, all over the place, fan service It went full A1 Studios. That's the thing I hate about it. It went full A1 Studios. Um, but it is good. I, I will give it that. Um, but yeah, I can't wait for them to eventually adapt to Unital Ring and then somehow fuck that up and fumble the bag. Um, because that, that literally, like, is bringing every character back together in the biggest regard. And you're dealing with, like, cataclysmic fucking ramifications with that one. So, like, if you think Alicization is crazy and it stakes, like, Unital Ring is, like, nuclear warfare. Um, Oh, God. Yeah. And it's uh, allegedly the final arc. Uh, 
of the series. And I gotta say, allegedly, thank God. I gotta say, thank God. Like it, it, it's time. It's time to put Sword Art Online to bed and not make another yeah. fi- thousand five hundred spinoffs. Yeah, uh, Sword Art Online, where where um, where Sword Art Online doesn't play a um, part uh, until uh, a part after the game is completed. <laughs> Oh boy. I just find that hilarious that it's called Sword Art Online, but yet half the series isn't isn't in Sword Art Online. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 just like now it's guns and lances and fucking grenades and all sorts of stuff. Um Yeah. Um but yeah, um I Honestly, um, because because I said uh, I did say to myself like maybe um, we could get this all done in two hours, which we're now over the two hour mark. Yeah, because yeah. I've I've really I've really got to start getting prepared to make dinner. Yeah, with my, with my family. So um, I feel like I'll save the Doctor Stone one for when we do the Doctor Stone video. That's kind of what yeah, I was that's thinking. That's a good idea. Like, yeah. the only other thing um, that really needs to be weighed in on is Chainsaw Man, and then, like... Which, which honestly, with Chainsaw Man, uh, the wasted potential <laughs> is just, like, um, not really having a structure for part two, in my opinion. That's my biggest... F- yeah, that's plus my... there's a whole review <laughs> series yeah. you guys are doing. Yeah, and, like, that's... So, that's kind of, like, just where say, I'm at. Like, yeah. we don't really need to talk about it, like... It, the biggest thing for me, like, is the pacing and, like, the plot structure, right? Like, I... Yeah. We talked a lot about it in, like, the last review. The, it's one of those that doesn't really need to be re in on. I will say, like, I do think it will work better on a binge than reading it, like, on whatever the fucking release schedule Fujimoto's limping to the barn with. Yeah, um, I feel like it. I feel like that, too. Because, like I said, um, that in the comments, like, I... I'm getting more more enjoyment out of say 100 girlfriends, Witch Watch, or Kill Blue than mm-hmm. uh, Chainsaw Man at the moment. Yeah, I'm getting more out of Freyrun than any of those. Like, uh... <laughs> and that, that that that's fair. And that's fair. That's fair um, as well. Different I mean, tastes. Fear different a whole week of its own. No, yeah, so. Fear Ends, yeah. Uh, Even though I've not watched it um, yet, um, I not I can see the hype behind it. I watched it, uh, and now I'm. I've caught up with it as a manga and it is a masterpiece. I, I, I want this to be animated fully. Like, I don't want this to be like a one-off and then not get a season two. Uh, fair enough. Fair Cause enough. it's but, insane. But yeah, I'll just say, I'll just say that the waste potential with the pacing in part two, which I hope picks up when we get into the, uh, no Shadamas points. And on that note, that's going to be my, um, my peace out for this video while yeah. I go and make dinner. Yep. So yeah, I'm heading Look off Look forward now. to our other content. Cause we have a lot more planned coming yeah. up soon. Yeah. I know you guys have a witch watch video that you want to do. And then, uh, yeah. a couple other things. I'll, I think I'll leave, uh, this one with a piece for me as well. Cause I think we talked on everything. Yeah.